This video is brought to you by Incogni. Hello Internet, says Skorikowski, and today we'll be taking a look at the Robot Handbook for Mongoose 2nd Edition Traveler. Published in 2022 and coming in at 264 pages, this book has a lot to offer and has really been useful in our current Traveler campaign. Robots are a staple of science fiction, serving as featured characters in books and movies for decades, ranging from plucky sidekicks, tragic heroes, unstoppable villains, and much more. And the Robot Handbook gives us a whole lot to work with for expanding robots in your Traveler game. Robots appeared in some of the Traveler books over the years, the original Central Supply catalog had a small selection, but the 2023 update version doesn't have any robots, which yeah, did annoy me at first, uh, despite the fact that it is a better book overall. However, the Robot Handbook makes up for that with lots of rules for creating, modifying, and using robots, as well as a massive selection of ready-made robots that you can bring into your game. From service robots we might encounter at a starport or aboard a spaceship, agricultural bots, medical robots and medical pods, lethal war and security bots, giant robots, tiny microbots for surveillance or assassination, robotic vehicles, hive mind nano swarms. There's a selection of skin job androids, some almost passable, while others are nearly impossible to identify as synthetics. We even have robotic animals. You can ride across the high plains of some planet on a robotic horse. We also get biological robots, either grown in a vat or animated dead into cheap labor, which is just ghoulishly awesome. As well as more cybernetic augments for travelers, some of those they might want and others get implanted into prisoners against their will, or even full cyborg bodies with brains transplanted in them. We have starship brains, from AI robotic brains to biological meat brains in a box. We have alien robots like Hiver and Varger and Jodani. We have various drones that we can encounter, including finally some detailed information on ships repair drones and probe drones, something that I've been wanting since our very first Traveler game when we played High and Dry. And something that we have made great use of in our current Traveler campaign, where clever use of a probe drone totally saved our butts in locating and surveilling a bad guy's hidden space station. Or even biological drones that look human, allowing travelers to pilot as somebody else, or maybe for a bad guy to use. And when the travelers try to kill the bad guy, they realize that, oh no, it was only a drone. You know, the bad guy is still out there somewhere. We also have rules for playing robot player characters, which is awesome. I am so happy to finally have robot PCs as an option. My biggest complaint here is that it took so long for the robot handbook to release. I mean, yeah, before we had a couple robots, and that was cool and everything, but now, with the updated selection and the expanded rules and everything like that, it is like a completely different game now. You know, it's kind of like when you got introduced High God into your Traveler game, right? I mean, with all the new stuff that you could suddenly do, it just brought your game up to a completely different level. Now, because there are so many options for upgrades and modifications, the first thing that a player or game master should know how to do is be able to build a robot from the ground up in order to see how all the parts work together, in order to know how to best go about modifying any of the pre-made robots without accidentally breaking something or simply getting themselves lost. So what we're going to do is go through the process of building a traveler robot. And like with the video that I did on spacecraft construction, we're going to keep this simple by building an existing robot model. That way we can check our work at the end to make sure that we did it right. And also this robot is one of the ones that my player characters have in our current campaign, so I also get the added benefit of doing my campaign homework right now. But first, a word from our sponsor, Incogni. Right now, hundreds of data brokers are collecting your information, compiling it and selling it. Your name, social security number, address, date of birth, email address, financial records, mother's maiden name, city that you were born in, shopping habits, etc. It is all for sale. This could be from companies that are looking to market to you better, or it could be employer background checks, but it could also be criminals. All those spam emails and robocalls that are blowing up your phone, if your phone is anything like mine, that's where they buy your phone number and email addresses. And it's not just scammers that are trying to fool you and get your money, but also scammers that are wanting to get your information so they can impersonate you in order to uh, scam your friends or your family into giving them money thinking it's you, or just outright identity thieves that are opening up accounts in your name. Now, while laws do exist that require data brokers to remove your information if you request them to, there's also hundreds of these companies, and finding and contacting them all is just simply impossible for any person to do. And that's 
what Incogni does for you. You simply make an account, give them permission to act on your behalf, and sit back as Incogni scours sites with your information and makes them remove it, and then follows up with them to make sure that they do, or make sure that information just doesn't magically reappear later. So to help keep your data away from scammers and identity thieves, and hopefully cut down on all your spam and robocalls, just hit the link below and use the code SESSCORE to get 60% off an annual plan with Incogni. That way you've got time for more fun things in life, such as building traveler robots. Now back to the video. So we're going to build a Tech Level 12 Crew Droid, a fairly inexpensive and versatile robot that you can find on many spacecraft throughout chartered space. Now spacecraft, if you recall, are presented in this format, showing the entire worksheet of what every piece costs and how much of our available tonnage it used, which makes it super easy to go in and make modifications because all the work is just right there in front of you. Robot stats, however, are presented in this format, which is perfectly fine if you just want to grab one and go, all you need is right there, but it doesn't show the steps and how we got there, meaning that if we want to construct or modify this robot, we're going to have to do some detective work in figuring out exactly where all this information came from, which I found surprisingly difficult to do. So to build a robot, we'll need the robot design worksheet, which there are three types depending on the robot that you're building. There is the extensive physical worksheet that you would use for complicated robots, then the short form worksheet, which is for simpler basic robots, and a one page microbot worksheet for robots under one kilogram. You can download these for free from the Mongoose website. There is also an Excel version worksheet, which I had trouble with when I touched the armor field trying to remove that plus three that was already filled in for some reason, and then everything broke. I found it pretty useful otherwise for small portions, but just be warned. I stick a link in the video description below if you want to pick those up. I'm aware that you've used Excel for years and are passably capable with it, but you know, you're also a dumbass, so I give it 50-50 if there was something wrong with the Excel spreadsheet or if it's just simply use it here. Either way, Mongoose, you should probably go ahead and update that spreadsheet you got there, either to fix any mistake that's on it, or just simply Seth-proof it. Okay, enough talk, let's build us a robot. Now for this, we're going to use the short form design worksheet. Now as this video progresses, you're going to see how that was a mistake, and I should have used the full physical worksheet instead, but I didn't realize that till it was too late, and I was already a couple hundred image slides into this, so you get to see exactly why we should have done the full-size worksheet. Anyway, once you have your worksheet, we're ready to begin with step one, chassis size. How big is this robot going to be? The chassis size determines the base costs, its physical capabilities and traits. General purpose robots can range in size from anywhere from a rat to a rhinoceros, or for those who use the metric system, you know, a kilo up to four vehicle tons for shipping tons and traveler. Anything larger than four vehicle tons is considered to be a vehicle with the addition of a robot brain, and we would use the vehicle handbook for that. Anything that's smaller than a kilo is considered to be a microbot or a nanobot, which appear in swarms, and those use different construction rules to make those. So we're just going to be making a regular robot here. Regular robots, they show up in sizes size through eight to say how big they are, and that determines how many slots that the robot has. Real fast, robot slots, that's kind of an abstraction term that shows the physical space that's available for customization, and it's really only referring to the space that we can use to customize. Each slot is kind of roughly equivalent to about three kilos or about three liters in volume. The true size of a robot is uh, twice that in slots, so if we had a size five robot, it lists that it has 16 available slots slots, but it also has another 16 slots worth of space that, you know, make up its basic structure and all of its circuitry and everything. So the robot size itself would be 32 slots in total size, but we really only talk about the available slots when we talk about robot size. Anyways, we also show the attack roll DM. Now this is the attack roll to hit our robot, so it's minuses if it's a really small one or pluses if it's really big and easy to hit. And once again, the equivalent size if we want to do something other than the metric system to figure out how big our robot is. And then the equivalent vehicle space is followed by the basic cost before we add any multipliers to this. So our crew droid is going to be a size 5. Gives us 16 slots. Base hit points, 20. Attack roll is just 0 to hit it. And it's about the size of a human or a varg or a dolphin. Hopefully not a bottlenose dolphin. Those things are beastly huge. But... Vehicle spaces is 0.5 and the base cost is 1000 credits. So going to our sheet here, just go up to the very top, go ahead and fill in. It's a crew droid, tech level 12, chassis size is 5, 
has 16 available slots, has an effective hit points of 20, and the basic cost for this is 1,000 credits. Easy peasy. Look at that, getting right along. Now we're on to step two, locomotion. Basic robot locomotion costs us no slots. That's expected just to be in there because robots usually move. Though some options, if we're adding a bunch of legs or a bunch of thrusters, that might incur additional costs if we're doing excessive amounts, but the base locomotion is just already included into the price. Secondary locomotion can also be added as well. If we're wanting to have a spider robot that can also fly, we can then pay for a secondary locomotion, but base is already built in. If we decide to choose none for our locomotion, such as we're doing an automated hospital bed and it doesn't move around, it just has little arms that heal you, we can choose none. And that adds 25% to our robot's available slots, giving us a lot more options that we can add since it doesn't have to worry about servos or anything to move it around. A robot's base movement speed is 5 meters per minor action in a 6 second combat round. And just a comparison, you know, player characters usually have 6 meters as their speed. Now, the speed of a robot starting at 5 meters, that's actually kind of hidden in the text there. It took me a while to find that, so, but it is, starts off at 5 meters. Now, of course, whatever locomotion type, any other options can increase or decrease that, but we start with a 5 meter per minor action base. So looking off this list here, we've got different types of locomotion it can be, whether it be uh, wheels or grav plates or walkers or thrusters, uh, the tech level that that becomes first available at, any agility modifiers that it gets due to that type of locomotion, as well as any sort of trait that that gives it. The book gives us a pretty good list of different traits that we might have. You know, ATV, for example, the robot is equipped to handle difficult terrain and gets a plus to any checks trying to negotiate difficult terrain. And all robots that uh, have are equipped with walker are also considered to be ATVs, which that's going to be important to us. Uh, we also have our base endurance. That's how long our battery can last as we're just operating it at full speed like normal. And then the cost multiplier that we then do to our base cost. So for our robot, we're going to choose a walker. It's agility zero, has the ATV trait, base endurance is 72 hours, not bad, and has a cost multiplier of times 10. So going back to our sheet here, we're going to fill in that we're a walker, have no agility modifier, have ATV trait, Multiplier of times 10, bringing that 1,000 credits up to 10,000 credit price. Okay, looking good so far. Now we're on to step three, physical options, which this one is going to be a lot longer than step one or two were. First one of these is going to be chassis options. You know, now that we've got our chassis set up, what little things do we want to add to it? First thing we'll look at is armor. Now, because we're a tech level 12 robot, that means that we have a base protection of four just already built in. So we already have four points of armor. Now we can increase that if we like up to a maximum of 40, and that's gonna cost us slots, 0.4% for every point of armor that we add, and a maximum of three points of armor per slot that we use, and the cost of that is 1,500 a slot. Now, we're not gonna be building a combat droid here. This is basically a basic crew droid, so we're not gonna add any armor and just go by the base protection of four. So back to our character sheet, just fill that in, showing that we have an armor value of four. Now with armor, we can also reduce the robot's base protection, and we can do that at minus one point of armor at a cost savings of about 10% of our base chassis cost. Now this is going to end up exposing the internal machinery and everything inside the robot, kind of like C-3PO's halter top, and that's going to prevent us from installing any additional armor or any environmental protection because all of our insides are exposed because we've just removed part of the armor, uh, the armor shell from it, but we can do that to save a few bucks, but we're not going to do that. Now let's look at robot endurance. Because our robot is tech level 12, that means that it's so advanced and so efficient that it has a 50% increase in the robot's base endurance. So once ours was 72 hours, so adding 50% to that means that our efficiency is actually at 108 hours, which is pretty nice. But because our robot is going to be spending long periods of time, you know, uh, repairing our ship if we're damaged or anything, I'd like it to work a little bit longer than that. So that's where we're going to pick it up, a power pack. Power packs are essentially just a spare battery that we put inside of our robot, and it's going to cost us some slots. It's going to cost us 10% of our slots for every pack that we add, but it's going to increase our endurance by 100%, essentially doubling it. And it's also going to give us the athletics endurance trait. And the price of those is 500 credits per slot that we use. 
So figuring that up, 10% of our slots comes to 1.6, rounding that up to 2, and at 500 credits a slot, that's going to cost us 1,000 credits. But the effect of it is it's going to increase our efficiency 100%, bringing our total efficiency up to 216 hours. That is great and definitely worth it for us. So filling that in, we're going to show our endurance starts off at 108 hours, but then we're adding a power pack, bringing that up to 216 for a price of 1,000 credits. Definitely worth it, including the slot that we had to stick that battery in. And once again, we get the athletics endurance skill of one because we added one power pack. Now let's talk about our hit points. We can increase or decrease our base hit points if we wish, you know, adding a few, you know, one more for every 5% of our base chassis cost, or we can reduce our base hit points for a little bit of savings, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and keep our hit points the way they are. So back to our sheet, fill in our total final hit points at 20. Next, let's look at some locomotion modifications for our legs. Now, first thing we can do is increase our agility, which can give us some athletics decks if we want, but we don't want to do that. We can also increase or decrease our robot speed and you know, maybe a little bit of savings cost or spend a little bit of money in order to increase the speed. I don't want to reduce it, but I would like to improve our robot speed to at least what a player character has at six meters per round. So to increase our movement rate, it's going to cost us 10% of our endurance in order to do that because it's moving faster, it's wearing its batteries out faster. And the cost of this is going to be 10% of our base chassis cost. So going to our character sheet here, we're going to fill that in. Tactical speed of plus one, it's going to give us a final speed of six meters per minor action. And because our endurance is 216, subtracting 10% of that, rounding it off, comes to 194 hours is what our new endurance is. And because our base price was 10,000 credits, 10% of that comes to 1,000 credits in order to increase our movement speed. Now let's look at our robot's manipulator arms. Each robot includes two manipulator arms worked into the chassis size already. Now, of course, you know, manipulators, we can add some, we can remove any of the manipulators that we have, we can make them small and weak or big and beefy or just larger in general, so we can do a lot of different things with those. Now, we can add a lot more manipulators if we wish, but I think the two that we have is good enough, so we're not going to do that. So first thing that we need to do, though, is calculate what the stats are for our manipulators. So for our strength, we can do that, and we can also increase the amount of strength that we have or decrease it, but I think the default strength is fine, so we'll go with that. In order to calculate what the strength of our robot is, all we have to do is uh, take our size, which is 5, multiply that by 2, that gives us a 10, subtract 1, and our robot has a strength of 9. Dex works the same way, so we can increase or decrease it if we wish, but if we don't want to do that and just go by the base Dex in order to calculate what that is, start with our tech level of 12, divide that by 2, add 1, and that gives us a dexterity of 7. And back to our sheet, let's go ahead and fill that in. Also show that we've got a strength modifier of plus 1, which is pretty handy to have. Now this is the portion where I made a mistake in using the short form. Is if we look at the robot itself in the actual book description, it shows that we have these two manipulators just like we have, which is great. However, at the very end, when I was trying to figure out a price discrepancy, I noticed here inside the description that while they appear humanoid, the droid's feet are equipped with flexible toes that allow it to uh, perform tasks with all of its limbs, like, you know, operate a power drill with its toes, which is pretty cool. And that isn't listed down at the bottom, so I had missed that. And I'm going to go ahead and do that because it's a pretty cool feature to have. The book gives rules for how we can enhance our legs to operate as manipulators. And it's a pretty simple formula. If we take the size of our robot, you know, which our case 5, and multiply that by 100 credits per each of our manipulators, which we're going to do that to both our legs. So as a size 5 robot, that comes to 500 credits of manipulator, so it's a pretty cheap thing to do. So, but our sheet, if you notice, only has room for two manipulators. I don't have room for a third and fourth manipulator here. However, because the right half of it is pretty empty and we're not using it for anything, I figure with a little Photoshop, we can fix that up and give us two more slots that we can do that. And I went ahead and did that for my two modified legs. 
So going ahead and filling those in, we have our strength and our dexterity for them. It's just going to be the same because it's based off of our robot's chassis size. And the cost of those is 500 credits each. So I was able to fix my mistake that I had made and I didn't realize it till I was at the very end of making all the slides and everything for this. And I was trying to figure out the price discrepancy that I had and, and I'd already made all the slides coming after this. And it was just a lot easier to do it this way. But that isn't the only time that I made a mistake with choosing this sheet. So that brings us to robot weapons. Robots can have all sorts of weapons. You can give them you know, laser hands or flamethrowers that come out of their mouth and auto loaders, or maybe they can just fire weapons because they're skilled for that. However, our robot isn't going to have any combat skills or any combat weaponry. And the reason I bring that up is when we look at the short form sheet, you can see that there's not much room that was given to us for all of our different slot options and options that we can do to our robot. And we actually need more room than this. However, this weapon category down here that's taking up space, since we're not going to be adding any weapons to our robot, I'm not going to be using that space. So once again, with a little bit of Photoshop here, I can just go ahead and increase the amount of our option slots all the way down, giving us plenty of room to work on this robot. And now that my finagling is out of the way, let's talk about zero slot options. Now, every robot that's a size one or larger includes a default suite already built into it. That includes five zero slot options that allow for a basically sensory suite, our visual spectrum, our auditory spectrum, be able to speak or be able to talk with other computers. And we can also uh, supplement some of these with different things. If we don't want it to have a, a voice speaker, we could you know, change that up to have it a very small and basic low resolution screen if we wanted to. But we start off with five things that already go in here as our default suite. Now, if we look at our sheet up at the top, these have already been filled in here. And that is great if you wanna go ahead and just keep those as is. However, I wanna go ahead and upgrade those. And upgrades we do have to pay for. Now, the first thing is our visual spectrum sensor, basically our robot's eyes. I could get a PRIS sensor instead for 2000 credits that also gives us IR and UV vision. And it works as a Geiger counter as well, which is a pretty sweet thing to have, especially for a robot that's going to be working on our ship's engines and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and pay for that upgrade to my visual sensors. Now I'll go ahead and note that it's got a Geiger counter built in, gets the IR and UV vision traits and costs us 2000 credits. Next is our speaker system. It's pretty standard. It can talk in the same range as a human. However, if we get a broad spectrum one, our robot will be able to emulate the sounds beyond the hearing ranges of most humans and be able to speak with some of the alien species that actually use ultra high or ultra low frequencies. And a broad spectrum voter speaker is only 500 credits. So let's go ahead and get that because this robot's also gonna be our ship steward. So going ahead and increasing that, 500 credits. Now let's look at our auditory sensor, which for some reason they have audible sensor there, which makes me think it just maybe beeps all the time. Now for auditory sensors, we could just use the basic one if we want, which he'll hears about as well as a human being does, or we can get the broad spectrum version that can hear along those ranges that our now upgraded voter speaker can speak. And if it is talking to any of those alien species that uh, talk at a very high or very low range outside of humans, it can hear what they're saying back to it. And that's a Pretty important thing to have for 200 credits and also gives us the heightened senses trait. So go ahead and fill that in. 200 credits, we can hear a lot better. A wireless link, that's basically our Wi Fi, that's good enough as is. But now let's look at our transceiver here. In the book, it says that if your transceiver, if you're wanting to speak to a ship in orbit, it needs to work at 500 kilometers. Well, our current one only works at five kilometers, so we're going to want to upgrade that. And we can do that to a 500 kilometer range for 500 credits, which is a pretty sweet deal to have. So go ahead and do that. That way our robot can talk to our ship if it's on the surface and the ship is in orbit. So now that we've covered all the default suite, or at least replacing everything, it was our default suite almost, let's talk about zero slot options themselves. Zero slot options are either so small that they don't really weigh enough to warrant being a slot, or they're just dispersed enough around the robot that it doesn't require spending a slot for them. Now the maximum number of zero slot options that a robot can have is starting off with five, which is the default suite that all robots get, and then at its size and at its tech level. And if we add any zero slot options beyond this maximum, those are gonna start costing us one slot each, making them no longer zero slot options. For our robot, we've got our default suite of five that we've already done, and our size is five. 
And then we can add in our tech level and it gives us a total number of 22 zero slot options that we can do. So we've already done five of these. Let's fill in some more. The first thing I want to get is a solar coating, make our robot solar powered. That way, if it's operating out in the full sunlight or full daylight, it can recharge its batteries and never have to stop and recharge or get a day off. And advanced when it's tech level 12, and it's advanced enough that this robot can operate at full speed just walking along the ground, and it still is going to be charged and everything working well for it. Now, the base price of this is 500 credits per base slot. And that's base slot of our robot, which we started off with 16 slots. So that's going to be 500 credits times 16, because this is going around the exterior of our robot. So going back to our sheet, let's go ahead and fill that in. Went ahead and put page number four in case I want to go back and just reference the, the information about it. And at 500 credits a slot times 16 slots comes to 8,000 credits for this upgrade. Now let's talk about vacuum. While robots don't need air to breathe, vacuum can damage a robot if some of its circuitry isn't protected against it, or it might have difficulty trying to purge any of its heat that builds up. So if we want our robot to creep around the outside of our ship and make repairs, we're going to need to get vacuum environment protection for it. That we can get at tech level 7, and it costs 600 credits per base slot, which once again, we have 16 of those because we got to cover the whole robot itself. So going back to our sheet, let's go ahead and fill that in as well as the page number to note that. And multiplying it out by our 16 slots comes to 9,600 credits, but definitely worth it because it can go outside the ship to make repairs and I don't have to. Next, we're just going to add a drone interface. Now, this is a, a pretty simple interface that allows our robot to be controlled by a human operator if they want to take it over or allow our, our robot to be fenced in electronically where it can't uh, go past any sort of electronic fence, you know, kind of like a restraining bolt or something if we want to keep it to a certain area. Those are pretty cheap to do. 100 credits. Go ahead and add that. Now let's get at some gecko grippers. Gecko grippers allow our robot to walk or crawl along walls or ceilings. And that's pretty handy to have if we want this thing to be working in our ship and going all around the place on it. Those cost 500 credits per base slot. So let's go ahead and add those on there. And that comes to 8,000 credits because we have 16 slots again. Now let's look at an atmospheric sensor. This is a pretty basic thing here. It basically tells us our temperature, our humidity, if there's any particulates in the area. It's, you know, it's a little bit more advanced than a smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector, but it costs 100. So let's go ahead and add that to it. But let's also get an olfactory sensor, essentially ability for our robot to smell. Pretty good to have because this thing's going to be cooking for us and I want it to smell what it's cooking. An improved olfactory sensor gives us heightened senses and costs 3,500 credits. So go ahead and put that on there. That pretty much does it for our zero slot options, which is a pretty good list that we have. Now let's talk about some of the fun stuff, the bigger things with slot cost options. These are the things that are going to weigh more than a kilogram that we can start fitting onto our robot, just larger hardware upgrades. Now, as a reminder, our robot has 16 slots, but we've already used two of those for our power pack. So I'm going to notate at the bottom that we have 14 slots that are still available to us. First one we're going to look at is a self-repairing chassis, ability for our robot to help heal itself, which is a pretty cool thing to have. The total slots that this takes up is going to be 5% of our total slots, which, you know, calculating that up, that really only comes to one slot is going to be used on that because we have 16 slots and rounding that up, that comes to just one. And the cost of this is 1000 credits per base slot because we're putting this over the uh, full exterior of our robot here. So 16 times. Now, self-repairing chassis, go ahead and note the page number down, and that comes to 16,000 credits because of the size of our robot. Now let's look at a medikit. That way our robot can help heal us and act as our medic. An enhanced medikit costs 5,000 credits, and it can only be used for a max skill of a medic too, but we're already going to be giving our robot that anyway, so that's fine. Go ahead and fill that in on our character sheet here, and as well as the page number for any of the additional information in case we need to reference it. Now let's give it a storage compartment. These are pretty cheap to do. A storage compartment can hold approximately two kilograms or two liters of space for each slot that we put towards it, and it only costs us 50 credits a slot. 
However, while we're at it, let's go ahead and spend a little bit extra and have this be a refrigerated storage compartment and get two slots of that, giving us quite a bit of refrigerated space. Holy crap, I have always wanted a mini fridge that came when I call it. We are totally going to fill this thing up with vodka and beer. Sorry, I hadn't said anything in a while and I was getting bored. Anyway, just noting that down in the sheet here, storage compartment, refrigerated, costs us 200 credits and two slots. Now let's look at a recon sensor, which is a pretty cool thing because it emulates the recon skill. An enhanced version of this takes one slot, but also gives us an effective recon skill of two. That costs us 10,000 credits and looks pretty useful, so let's add that on there. One slot and gives us recon to 10,000 credits. Perfect. Nine slots to go. Let's see what else we can add. How about a fire extinguisher? You know, or Things not only going to be cooking, but also working in the engine room, so fires are probably going to happen. So let's go ahead and add that. One slot, 100 credits. Okay, now for the big one. The Starship Engineering Toolkit. That way our crew robot can walk around the ship and make all the repairs and all the necessary things that it needs to do. That way I don't have to. Now an Enhanced Engineering Toolkit, that's going to be Tech Level 12, is going to take up five slots in space. Pretty big. And it's only going to allow for a maximum skill of two, which that's going to be fine for us. And that costs us 4,000 credits. Now that does seem a little bit cheap to me right there because another thing I want to show you is the cutting torch. Now, if we get an improved cutting torch at tech level nine, that takes up two slots and costs 5,000 credits. However, a cutting torch is included a standard part of the Starship Engineering Toolkit that we're going to be picking up for 4,000 credits. So we're already going to be getting a cutting torch and we don't have to spend the two slots or 5,000 credits on that. So we're going to want to go ahead and notate that down. So putting that on there, five slots includes the cutting torch improved and costs us 4,000 credits, which is cheaper than getting a cutting torch itself. And that is it for our physical slot options. Okay there, looking pretty good. Now that we've covered everything physical about the robot, now let's talk about the electronics with its brain and what it can do. Robot brains come in various types, you know, from primitive all the way up to fully aware conscious robots. We're going to be looking at getting an advanced brain robot, which uh, shows that we can only do tasks that are up to difficulty 10. So that's a very important thing that we're going to remember there, but it's a pretty average brain robot. So in purchasing robot brains, the first thing we want to look at is how advanced it is, you know, from primitive to conscious, what level of computing power it has, essentially what its bandwidth is, uh, and the base intelligence of what this would be equatable to, to a softened being, as well as some built-in programs that it's not going to cost us any bandwidth at all, but it just comes standard with whichever brain it is. So we're going to be looking at an advanced tech level 12 brain. That gives us a computer level of 2, or a bandwidth of 2, costs us 10,000 credits, gives us a base intellect of 0, which means we don't get any skill modifier, and comes with a couple programs, Intelligent Interface, Expert 1, and Security 1. So taking that back to our sheet, let's fill that in. Advanced Brain, doesn't require any slots, Tech Level 12, Bandwidth 2, Base Intellect 8, no dice modifier, has a couple programs built in, and costs us 10,000 credits. Next, let's talk about zero bandwidth skills. Advanced robot brains, like the one that we have, can have additional zero bandwidth skills. So for each point of computer processing power that it has, you know, not expanded, just the base bandwidth, a robot may have that many zero level skills. Well, because our base bandwidth is two, that means that we can have two additional skills at zero level that we can add to our thing. So let's go ahead and add those there. Now that we've got our basic brain down, let's look at upgrading this bad boy, making it faster and smarter. There's a couple different upgrades that we can do. Now the robot brain bandwidth is the limiting factor to the size of whatever skill packages that our robot gets because it can't hold any more than that. But we can add an additional storage module to use as a slot option in our robot to increase its bandwidth capacity, allowing us to have more skills. Essentially, we're going to be adding another hard drive to our computer, taking up one of our robot slots. 
Now, this isn't going to change the robot's inherent skill level limitations. It's really just bulking up its uh, storage capacity rather than its ability of processing all of that information. A brain bandwidth upgrade, we can get an advanced one at tech level 12, increases our bandwidth by four and costs us 20,000 credits. So let's go ahead and fill that in on here. So we're getting a plus four, it's costing us one slot. Our adjusted bandwidth with that four plus our original two gives us six, and we still have two zero bandwidth skills, and that's gonna cost us 20,000. Then let's go back to our physical options section and reduce our spare slots from three to two in order to reflect that. Now let's look at upgrading our robot's intellect. We can increase the intellect capacity of our robot, but that's going to cost us some bandwidth points. Now we're going to bring ours up from an 8 to a 9, so just increasing it up by 1. And to calculate the cost on that, you take our current intellect of 8, add 1 to it, giving us a 9, multiply that by 1,000 credits. So for 9,000 credits and the cost of one bandwidth, we can increase our robot's intellect, which is definitely a good thing to do. So filling that in at tech level 12, adjust our intellect to nine. That now gives us a plus one dice modifier on any intellect skills, which is pretty nice. It's reduced our bandwidth down to five from six, but still definitely worth it because we now have a plus one DM for 9,000 credits. Okay, now that is it for the front of the sheet. This is great. And this is our entire physical robot right here. But now that we've done all the hardware, let's start talking about software with step five, skill packages. Now, when it comes to robot skills, primitive brains and basic brains, those just use pre-packages that are designed towards a specific task that the robot does. Yeah, the simple things like, you know, cleaning, tracking, alerting us if there's smoke in the air, servant, hunter, killer, that sort of thing. Kind of like a Roomba. All it really knows how to do is just vacuum and you're not going to get any more out of it. Now, advanced brains or higher robot brains, those use skill programs which emulate the different tasks and skills that biological beings have, you know, essentially just like a player character. So for those, we use a standard brain package. Now, most zero level skills require no bandwidth, though a few of the zero level skills do require a bit of bandwidth, but those are really the, the more complicated ones. Now, a brain can hold as many bandwidth zero skills as its original rate based bandwidth score. So we've already done that. And any bandwidth zero skills that we have above that amount, that's going to cost us one bandwidth each. So we want to avoid having that. Now, when it comes to robot skills, the robot applies their dice modifier for a high intellect or a high dexterity to whatever that skill is. Now, this could raise their effective skill level beyond the, the level cap, which, hey, that's perfectly fine because it's a very fast or very intelligent robot. And skill program price, if we're going to be upgrading it from level zero, we multiply that price by a factor of 10 for every level above zero. So they get pricey pretty quickly. So looking at the full list of different skills that we could purchase for a robot, and as a reminder, we have a bandwidth of five and an additional two zero bandwidth skills that we can do. Now with our bandwidth, we could do it in this different ways. We could have, you know, uh, maybe a second level and two, three first levels or two second level and one first level, but however we want to do it. We're going to go ahead and get five skills at first level for our full five bandwidth here. So looking through those, we're going to get admin, but getting that at first level. So it's going to bring up its tech level, bring its bandwidth up to one, and it's going to multiply by 10 the price, bringing that 100 credits to 1,000. Next, we're going to get Advocate. Same thing, just bring that up to 5,000 credits for first level and Advocate. Then Mechanic, so it can work on our ship after we've done all those upgrades, so it can walk along the outer hull and vacuum. That's going to cost us 1,000 credits to give it Mechanic 1. And then Medic, so it can use that handy med kit we bought for it, bring that up to 2,000 credits. And Steward, because this thing's going to be our ship steward and take care of passengers as well as do all of our laundry and all of our dishes and carry beer around for us inside of its mini fridge. Now for our two zero bandwidth skills. For that, we're going to get electronics and engineering. Now, just to note, both of those are skills that have multiple fields, such as you can get electronics computers or electronics comms or engineering M drive or engineering life support. However, for zero level, and zero is just applied to all of the categories within that particular skill if we're not going to be adding any level to it. So go ahead and get those at the base zero. That way our robot can do electronics and engineering just and not specialized in any particular area, not getting any pluses on that. 
So turning our sheet over to the back, going up to the top portion where our skill packages are. Now, before we start filling those in, let's go ahead and make one small thing here. And that's our athletics endurance that we got from our speed modification. That gave us an athletics endurance of one. And we also got a recon two from our recon sensor that we had purchased for our robot. These are more hardware skills versus software skills, but since this is the skill list, I want to go ahead and just notate these here. That way I've just got a master list of all the skills that I have, and I went ahead and put them in blue down at the bottom just to denote that these are hardware skills and not actual skill packages for it. That out of the way, let's go ahead and start filling these in. We've got admin level one that takes up one bandwidth uses our intellect because our intellect has a dice modifier of plus one that brings our admin up to two as an adjusted skill and i'm going to go ahead and do that for advocate now as advocate two because it's got the intellect that's using as its trait and our electronics and engineer even though there's zero level because of our high intellect that gives us an electronics and engineering of one across all of those categories and then just fill the rest in for mechanic medic and steward Okay, well, that is it. Our robot's essentially done here. Let's go ahead and total all that up to find out what the final price for this thing is. And it's 130,100 credits. Okay, now on to step six, finalization. On the back of our worksheet at the very bottom is our robot record sheet, which is kind of a standardized format that all robots inside the robot handbook are presented in. That way it's pretty easy to read. and It's got all of our essential information. However, because our robot has so many skills, they really don't give us much room for that. But since we also don't have any attacks, we can go ahead and just Photoshop and correct those to give us a much larger field for skills. Now, this would have happened regardless of which worksheet that I use. So this wasn't a result of me using the wrong worksheet. I was already going to have to do that. So just filling all the information in from our robot here kind of makes it nice and neat for a player to be able to reference and look at in-game pretty quickly. Now look at that cost there. It's 130,100 credits, which is a pretty busy number to have. It's you know not like how they are presented in the rest of the book. So when we look at the cost modification for purchasing robots, it says that a robot's final cost can be rounded down or up to the first or second significant digit. And there could be discounts or premiums applied, just depending on how common it is or how everything is. And this can range around from 10 to 20 percent. And it says that it is also applied very unevenly. So just keep that in mind. So looking at our robot cost of 130,000, let's just round that down, make it a nice and even 130,000 credits. Much, much nicer. Let's go ahead and compare this to the crew droid from the robot handbook here. And just looking through the fields, make sure that I got everything on here. Yep. Yep. Now, manipulators, I noted that we do have these modified leg manipulators because the book failed to mention that on theirs, but I've got it right there because I'm a nice game master. Yep. Everything's good. Everything's fine. All the skills are there. However, if you notice, there is a pretty big difference in price. The book lists the cost at 150,000 credits. Well, we've calculated ours at 130,000 credits, and I have gone through this robot back and forth, trying to find if I did anything wrong. Now, I did find through that the modified legs, so that's why I had to go back and add that in a little bit later and kind of awkwardly, but I had not been able to find any other discrepancies to, that would cause it to be 150,000 credits versus my 130. However, if you recall, there was a pretty wildly vary in all the different markups and markdowns that it can have. So I can only assume that that is the result of that and not any sort of error on my part. So we'll just go ahead and just list ours at 130,000 credits, even though the guy down the street is selling his for 150. And with that, our character sheet is done. Well, let's go ahead and give this thing a profile picture and description. However, that profile picture is for the standard model that costs a lot more, so let's make ours blue, because it's the cheaper knockoff. Okay, looking good. And here it is. Okay, well that was probably a lot more in-depth than most people were wanting or expecting, but I for one learned a whole lot going through this exercise, and for one, I'll definitely be using the full-size robot worksheet going forward. That was a 
That was a valuable lesson learned. Now, as I said, most players are just going to be using the catalog portion of the book, just grabbing ready-made robots and using those, and that's perfectly fine. You know, a few people are really just going to be going through the whole process of reverse engineering any of those robots the way that I did today. But for games where there are going to be frequent robots, or even NPC robots that the players, the game masters might want to modify or do some different skill programs with, I think it's a good idea to learn how to properly build a robot because you just learned so much in the process of that. Oh yeah, it's just like those players that know how to build a ship using High God are way better at modifying an existing spaceship than those other players that have no idea where everything works together and interconnects. And no matter how many times you tell them that you can't just drop a bigger engine in the thing and a bunch of turrets without also updating the power plant, and why the hold keeps getting smaller and smaller with the more crap they keep trying to stick in that thing. You learn a lot building your first starship and Traveler, and robots are the same way. As far as why my robot didn't come to the same price as the one in the book, I have no idea. Maybe it was you know, those uneven discounts and premiums that the book talked about, you know, maybe that's just all it was, or maybe the author just made a mistake when they were calculating it up and not just reflected in there. I guess simply like the look of 150,000 credits versus 130, or one of the prices that I was using was mispriced in the book due to some mistake, or maybe I just messed something up and made a mistake myself. Again, my money is that you screwed up, but don't worry about it. If you messed up, you were going to get a hundred comments from people telling you how you messed up. And if you didn't, you're still going to get a hundred comments from people telling you how you messed up. That's the internet. For anyone wanting a copy of the robot that I made, either to double check my work or simply use in their own game, I stick a link down in the video description below. Have fun with it. And we barely scratched the surface as far as options and different things that you can do. You know, hunter killer robots and all the different surveillance options. Or if the travelers want to save a few credits and buy a used robot for less, it can even have a few quirks just like you spacecraft have. You know, maybe good upgrades the previous owner had installed, or maybe it's got a bad motivator. There's even optional rules for robot sanity. I absolutely love that about it. You can pick up a copy of the Robot Handbook from the Mongoose website or pick up a PDF on DriveThruRPG, links below. If you were really wanting to incorporate robots and androids and drones into your Traveler game, I highly recommend it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews, how-tos, just hit that subscribe button. And we want to thank our sponsor, Incogni, for sponsoring this video. And since it's been over half an hour since he last mentioned it, make sure you go to the link below and enter the code SESSCORE to get 60% off. Till next time, travelers, you have a great day. You know, I thought that having my robot beer fridge would be awesome, but it is not at all. Problem is that it is just way too smart and way too skilled for that job. You see, it's got a couple levels in advocate, and that means that it's a lawyer. And it's got some levels in medic, and that means that it's a doctor. And of course, it's got some levels in steward, and that means that it's a bartender, right? Which you think would be good. But nah, there I was. I was one day into jump space, and it suddenly tells me that it can no longer in good conscience continue to serve me alcohol, because if something happened, it would be liable for it. And it cited all the rules and regulations so why that would be. And then it gave me a two-hour PowerPoint presentation and all the dangers of alcohol while you're in jump space. And because of those levels that it has an admin, it was a pretty good PowerPoint presentation, I admit. Anyway, this stuff is like carrot-infused water or some crap like that. It's freaking awful. I am selling that hunk of junk off the moment I get to stop what.